One, thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, considering the many security challenges bedeviling Nigeria at this point in time, one of the key security agencies tasked with the responsibilities of combating internal insecurity is the Nigeria police. And so tonight, our focus is on policing in Nigeria. I am joined now in our Lagos studios by a former commissioner of police, Lagos State, former inspector general of police and chairman, police service commission, Sir Mike Okiro. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank it is a much. great honor having you in the studio. Thank you. Right, sir. So you were uh, a commissioner of police, inspector general of police, and chairman uh, police service commission. Yes. How have you found these experiences? Well, um, I'm happy with the experiences. One, as um, commissioner of police in Lagos, yeah. had a wide spectrum of uh, events to handle in Lagos. Lagos being a commercial city, of Nigeria, and uh, all the commercial activities are taking place in Lagos. I know we have high commercial activities as a of crime. Absolutely. I was able to handle that. And um, my colleague became chairman became chairman of police. That's we trained the entire security, internal security of Nigeria, and um, controlling all the police officers who are saddled with that responsibility. Uh, finally, I became chairman of the Public Commission, whose duty was to oversee activists of police officers, recruit, yeah. appoint, discipline, and promote them. So I'm happy that uh, Nigerians gave me that opportunity. Right. And I also find your journey very, very inspiring. And I also know that at the point you authored five books. Yeah. What was the inspiration behind that? Yeah, um, the... the the, the books I wrote mainly have to do with my experience in the police. One, I wrote about overcoming security challenges, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, chronicled my cases, cases I handled, cases I investigated in the police, and how the, the, the experience in those books would help people to avoid certain security lapses. I could talk about police in Nigeria and democracy. I tried to draw a difference uh, between how police operated the military regime as against the operations in a, in, a, in a civilian or in a democracy. So that, I don't call that to police in Nigeria in a democracy. I could talk about, um, uh, this was not, not very much about police, but it had to do with fraud. You know? It's paid for public funds in Nigeria. It was co-authored with uh, my match in the university who were in law. Yeah, another one I wrote was uh, my, 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 my biography. And then I wrote another one, which every different the papers to see it, it's structure in Nigeria. Yeah. The controversy, you know, people have different views about what structure is. People want Nigeria to be structured, so don't want it. So that is a Buddha to controversial. Mm. Right. So of all the books you wrote, the one I would like us to come back to uh, is the legal implications of the mismanagement of public funds in Nigeria. Yeah. I'd like us to talk about that later. But let's get to the crux of tonight's conversation. That's the Nigerian police who existed for over a century, having calls for reform and operation, welfare, employment. What kind of reforms do you think the Nigerian police needs at the time? I just need so many reforms. Because uh, if you look at um, what the police was before independence, what is war during independence, what is war during the military rule, what it is now, the, the police sliding backwards. Mm. A lot of things need to be done, both in terms of structure in terms of uh, training, in terms of operation, funding, and, uh, and uh, management. It needs a lot, of, a lot of overhaul to bring it at pair with modern technology, modern policing. 